Derita, derita, derita. Stop, stop, stop. Bukari, bukari. Hop, 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 hop. Nuri gua. Um, your car dealer bond. So a little bit about the company uh, that we started. We started it back in 2011. Small mom and uh, just family owned deal. Uh, my partner and I, Phil, uh, Phil Noam, we started this company. We both had full time jobs were working for this insurance company. He worked on one side of it where he was an IT um, and I was on the other side of it where I was involved in product development, underwriting, claims, sales and marketing, a lot of that other piece of the company. Um, so I kind of understood the, the used car dealer market. He understood how to connect people and how to bring technology and how to further what I was doing and my ideas of, yeah, and, and he'll be the first one to tell you, he didn't understand about bonds, he didn't understand insurance, he didn't understand used car dealers, besides he had bought a bunch of cars. But that really wasn't his, his um, it wasn't his wheelhouse, that was mine. Um, I also was not, I couldn't set up an email. I also had very limited uh, understanding of what a network was and how it worked and how servers work. And I'm still only dangerous with this stuff. Um, and how, you know, how things connect in the background of certain stuff. Now, he's not a webmaster, but the connectivity of the IT services is very away from what I'm good at. I have no idea. I'm very lost in that world. So we came together. We started this little company. Uh, we started off a totally different company, to be frank with you, and it, it bombed um, completely because there were some... Other partners that were involved in it that just couldn't pull their weight day after day. Um, and we noticed during that process that, hey, the two of us that actually are pulling our weight are me and you. Why don't we do something together? And I was already doing this on my own, but I could tell very fast that I was going to run out of bandwidth. I had a full-time job as a national director for an insurance company. I didn't have a whole lot of extra time. And I have a family. I, had a, I have still but I married and had two kids. One of them was in high school. My daughter was in high school. My son was kind of just born through all this. And actually, he was very, very small. So I still had to pretend like I was a dad. I still had to dedicate some hours once I go home to actually um, being a parent. I had a commute. So, you know, you, you drive from uh, one side of, of and I was on, in the Bay Area, so people anywhere near the Bay Area are familiar with having to commute from one side of the bridge to the other, and that takes hours out of a day. And in the middle of that, I'm trying to make phone calls. I'm trying to, um, you know, trying to be productive at the same time as having my full-time job. So that's how we kicked this company off. Um, I started myself, and then quickly after four months said, Phil, you know what, you're... You're a heck of a guy, why don't we do this together and we'll just break it all up 50-50. And you'll learn along the way and everything will be, everything will be fine. That's how we started uh, for years since there was no conflict of interest with our, with our daytime job. We kept those daytime jobs and we plugged away 15 hours a week, um, each of us, and we just plugged away, plugged away, plugged away. And uh, little by little grew the market share, grew our presence. Um, we're certainly not the biggest company in the, on the planet for selling bonds, but in, in California, again, we're doing some very unique things that nobody else is doing, but even the companies that have been doing this 30, 40 years aren't doing. So I think that you're going to get a lot of value out of what we're bringing to the table for you. Um, let's see. So uh, to step ahead a couple of years, in 2015, early 2015, I decided this company was getting a little too big. We had done about $750,000 worth of, uh, of bonds in one year, California bonds in particular. You're talking roughly around seven to 800 bonds, uh, probably 800 bonds that we wrote that year, and ne neither one of us are full-time. And our part-time staff was really struggling to keep things together. So we decided that one of us had to make the change and had to do it. And um, that ended up to be me. I made the plunge, went full-time, parted ways with my the company that I had worked for for 
16, 17, 18 years at that point, made it to national director, was making well into six figures, and then just said, you know what, this other business, I, I, this is at least mine. And at the end of the day, I don't have somebody else explaining to the, me the way that I have to conduct business or uh, because there's certain constraints into what we're doing. So maybe if this year our focus was to go into a different part of the company and to really start to uh, grow a different part of the company, when I worked for this insurance company, I just had to sit on the sidelines while that other side of the company grew and there wasn't a lot of focus put on what I was doing. So we weren't able to prosper the way that I think we could have if I had a lot more flexibility. So, and I had all the flexibility in the world. It just wasn't, it just wasn't enough like you have once it's your business. Um, so that's why this started. That's why I ended up going full time with this. Uh, I moved my family out of the Bay Area. The rat race there for me in particular uh, to raise a small family it was a little bit outside the pocket of what I was really looking for longer term. I think for me personally, I like a slower pace. I was born in Anaheim. I was uh, raised in Anaheim. I come from that fast paced city life. I lived in Bakersfield for about nine months and that slowed things way down for me. Um, that was right out of high school, probably around 20 years old, 21. Uh, and then moved up north and lived in the Bay Area for two years back in, and it's about 2000 actually, uh, lived in the Bay Area and out in Union City, if anybody's familiar with that area. So I lived in Union City, commuted to the other side of the bridge, spent two years there, moved back down to Orange County, lived in different parts of Orange County for a while, a couple more years, and then moved back to the Bay Area, settled out in Fremont for about eight years. And anyway, all said and done, um, just kind of wanted to slow down. Just wanted to kind of slow the pace. And if, if this, if this uh, business really runs, <clears throat> because thankfully with Phil's IT experience, he was able to make this all run uh, virtually. So I didn't have to report to an office every day that was in the middle of Palo Alto or Menlo Park. I could turn around and go to um, an office that was right down the street from my house and let's say Fresno or Clovis. So that's what we did. We moved down to a slower, uh, more reasonable pace for me. Uh, we kind of know our neighbors a little bit. Um, what I was really looking for is the education for my, my kids. Their uh, school districts are fantastic. The college where my daughter is going to, she had that handpicked between two different colleges in the state, so it worked well for her, for my son, who's still, he, now he's only going into fourth grade. Um, he's got years of going through this, and the Clovis Unified School District's absolutely remarkable. So that was a big reason of why we chose exactly where we're at. The cost of living's low enough, um, in particular, as it pertains to the Bay Area. Um, and we could buy a house here and, and have, a, have a life, really enjoy ourselves and, and kind of get away from the rat race. There's still quite a bit of hustle and bustle, but that's more internally, um, you know, where we internally are creating those, those um, you know, targets and that type of thing. So anyway, that's a little bit about me. That's a little bit about the company, uh, how we got started, what we think we're going to do for you during this podcast period. Um, hopefully by now you have an idea that, there's a chance that I know what I'm talking about, so I, I'm hoping that that'll intrigue you to, to hear, hear us out, g give us a little bit. And I know that this can get exhausting with knowing how much content there is, and you got to sift through it, and you got to find it, and you've got a million podcasts, you got a million videos that are out there. How do you find the one that can help you with what you're doing? How can you find a podcast that can actually, or, or some type of content that you can listen to? A lot of and including me, I don't like to read books of information. I'd rather hear somebody explain it to me in, in 20 minutes on my way to work or, or something like that. Um, so I, I, we're going to try to do that for you. And, I, and we'll give you a little dose here in a sec of some different things that we've got in store for you. But um, but suffice it to say, I think you're going to get a lot of value out of, out of this. And I think that you're going to... Um, 
be able to really take your business to the next level in reducing some of your costs, reducing some of your exposures, and really helping you increase your sales. Because a lot of the times, the difference between selling four cars a month or eight times a month, it's mindset and it's two to three mechanical differences in technique that you're kind of uh, either delinquent or that could be polished just a slight bit more. So uh, we'll put the rest out to the next one. I'll leave you guys hopefully uh, wanting some more and wanting to hear some more and um, and we'll just keep delivering on our side. Again, this is Mike from your car dealer bond and let your friends know about this. You guys got your dealer buddies that you hang out with at the auction and you guys have lunch and you guys sit there and and tell dirty jokes be before the auction starts. I know who you are. You guys tell each other about this. All you guys that have been in the industry for five, 10 years that are really uh, seasoned dealers, you guys know a bunch of other dealers. Don't, don't, don't get coy. Go tell your buddies, your car dealer podcast is what they need to invest some time and listen to. That'll really help them elevate their own businesses and they can do it on their own time. You don't gotta go to sit in some seminar at, at, at three o'clock on a Tuesday when you should be out selling cars or back at your business. We're gonna be able to give this to you on your own terms. You listen to it when you want to, and we think it's gonna to provide to you fantastic value. Um, so thanks again.